He appeared in another form to two of them as they walked and went into the country. By the way, do you remember when they realized who he was? Remember they got to where they were going and they asked Jesus to join them for a meal, you know. And as they said, he broke bread. It says he broke bread and gave thanks. And only when he broke bread and gave thanks, they recognized who he was. Amen. And they realized they'd been walking all that way with Jesus. I wonder how many times you and I have walked with Jesus and didn't realize it. How many times has Jesus been right by your side? How many times has Jesus been there in your greatest time of need and you didn't even recognize he was there? Because of your sorrow, because of your sadness, because maybe of your unbelief, you didn't recognize that Jesus was right there. Folks, listen, he's always there. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. He said, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. I'll walk with you through the valley of the shadow of death. I'll be there in your darkest hours. He's the light of the world, folks. And when we walk through the darkest times, look for the light of the world. To, he'll be there with you. Psalm said, Yea, though I'll walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. How can he say that? For the very next line, for I, for I am with you. He's with us when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. He's with you every time in your darkest days, in your darkest hour. Reach out. Jesus is there. Reach out and touch him by faith. He appeared to some in another form. What does it mean when it says in another form? What does that mean? He took a form that they didn't recognize. They didn't know it was Jesus. I've used this illustration. I think, I'm, I'm sure I've used this illustration here before. I've used it in a lot of other places too. What if Jesus chose to be in another form of a dirty, stinky, black person and walked in the doors of our church. How would he be received? We sure wouldn't recognize him as Jesus, amen. But what if he came in that form? According to the Bible, he could, he could, he could come in another form. If it wasn't true, it wouldn't say it right here. He was in another form when he walked with those men on the road to Emmaus. Can Jesus come in another form today? I'll guarantee if he's done it before, he can do it again. In fact, he can do whatever he wills and chooses to do. That's right. You know why? Because he's God. God can do anything he wills and chooses to do, and you and I and the devil and all the demons in hell can't keep him from it. Jesus wants to get in another form and walk in this church in any form he wants to take. He can sure do it. And I think sometimes he just sends people along in another form to find out oh, what we're going to do and how we're going to treat them. We've seen it happen here. You deacons can vouch for it. We've had several occasions where somebody's just walked up when we've been out there talking to this. And sometimes they have a need for gas. Sometimes they need food. Sometimes... You know, whatever, but, but how do we know that's not Jesus in another form? How are we going to treat him? What kind of Christian are we going to be if Jesus comes in another form? Third thing we see is Jesus scolded some who were in unbelief. You ever been scolded by Jesus? Listen to verse 14. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they said to me, and upbraided them with their unbelief. Again, go, go, go back. Go back here. here. Listen to verse 11. Been, he had been seen of her, but they believed not. Look at the end of verse 13. Told him unto the rest neither believed they then. We said a lot of unbelief going around. 
And Jesus scolded them, upbraided them according to Scripture. Scolded them because of their unbelief. He appeared unto the eleven as they said at me, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. You know what's the strongest evidence in a court of law? An eyewitness. An eyewitness is the strongest thing in a secular court of law. You're supposed to believe an eyewitness. Now, an eyewitness can lie. If they choose to, they can lie. But if an eyewitness is telling the truth about what they saw, that is one of the strongest evidences in a court of law. They search for eyewitnesses. How many, how many police shows have you seen and watched on TV where one of the first things they say was, were there any witnesses? Were there any witnesses? Why? Because of the strength and the evidence of an eyewitness. Eyewitnesses had seen Jesus literally with their own eyes and they were told the disciples, the very ones that should have known first and foremost that Jesus was going to rise the third day because he had told them he was going to. And instead of instead of re, uh, reacting with joy and exultation, they said, oh, we don't believe. Don't believe. Sounds like a church meeting. You know, we can do this with God's help. Don't believe it. Don't believe we can do it. Sounds just like us, doesn't it? Even with our unbelief. We like to brag and call ourselves believers, you know. Oh, I believe the Bible. I, oh, really? How much of the Bible do we really practice? I heard a preacher say one time, said, uh, what, what we actually believe is the things that we do. All the rest is just religious stuff. What do we do according to the Word of God? We could go a lot of different places and that's, that's for another day. But uh, I'll just use one example. The Bible talks about anointing with oil and praying for the sick. I wonder how often have we done that? Oh, I believe the Bible. I believe every word of the Bible. Well, what if somebody comes and asks for the elders, the deacons, the pastors of the church to anoint with oil and pray for them? Are we going to do that? Are we going to do that then? We better. That's what the Bible says to do. Don't claim to be a Bible believer if you're not willing to do what the Bible says. You're welcome. <laughs> he, he scolded them that were in unbelief. What's the fourth thing Jesus did here? He commissioned his disciples to go in his name. He commissioned his disciples to go. Where did he tell them to go? Well, let, let's look. Verse 15. He said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He commissioned his disciples to go into all the world. And it doesn't say so here, but in another place, it specifically says, go in his name. In his name, they'll do wonders. In his name, they'll cast out things. In his name, they'll, everything is done according to his name. It's like Roger was talking about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's something that ought to be on our lips and on our hearts almost constantly. I love that song, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. There is something about that name, the name of Jesus. Roger so eloquently said, when you're under attack, if you can't do or say anything else, just say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's salvation in the name of Jesus. His name is the name which is above every name. That in the name of Jesus, Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory.